Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back of his teardown lab. You recall we had this radar Doppler detector that detects the presence of a person or bigger object within a seven meter sphere that radiates out of here. And of course, we have our node MCU WAMOS type Arduino boards based on the ESP8266, um, I want to say, and it is 8266. And also, we do have some ESP. 32 type boards and other various ESP um, 12 boards. Like whatever you've got, whatever flavor will work on this project, make sure you get some pin headers on there. Make sure you have some of these radar boards, which I got off eBay in packs of five, so I've got plenty. Uh, and also, if you have one, it still will work as well if you've got any of these little Arduino boards that are just like that, that don't have all of the gubbins, as long as you can program them. That's what you need to know. Um, so this is the bigger one, which is the slightly bigger footprint. I, I quite like it because you've got more I.O. And we're going to plop it straight on the breadboard. I'll zoom in a bit so you can just see how we hook this up. Plop that in straight like there. Now remember on breadboard that you do have the bus bars going this way vertically in columns up to this point. These are this they're like cut in half here so you've got all of these and all of these vertically and then you have the power rails running horizontally. That's all you need to know about that. Not much to worry about. And then we're going to plug our radar Doppler radar uh, board in there. And I've got a bunch of the usual jumper wires, so we're going to go from the positive rail here to the V in, so that will get power going to the V in there. In fact, let me pull that off because it's probably a bit confusing. And you can see we can hook it here, here or here because these wires are going all the way through in the columns like I mentioned. And then we're going to plug in a ground and I'm going to use, oh, why don't we use a black wire for a change? I'm going to use black wire for ground and I'm going to put that onto the negative rail of the bus bar. And if you do get confused, remember there's a positive and negative and red. You know, if you use the colors, uh, you, won't, you won't get as confused. So um, looking now on your uh, Arduino e-board, your Node MCU, you have a pin here that says V in on the end. And I'm going to hook that there. And that's the downside with these boards, by the way. They take up nearly all your breadboard. Then they give you one little row of pins. So they're kind of a wide dip format. So we're going to go from the V in and we're going to put that onto our bus bar here. And the reason, by the way, we're doing that is because we're going to plug this in on the USB. And that is actually going to power the module. Technically speaking, if you put power on these rails, you'll also be able to power them. So when you make uh, an integrated build and you make ne won't necessarily want to use the USB because this is a Wi-Fi project, you could power it through the V-in or ground pins. I am pretty confident if you put power through the V-in here, it'll go via the 3v3 regulator, power the module with 3v3, and then give you an output here, which is actually 3v3. Fun fact, this module also has a 3v3 output pin here, so we're not using that, but you could. You've got lots of options here. So I'm gonna plug this ground wire though to the uh, ground rail there, the negative, and I'll put it, put it there out of the way. And then we need to go from here to here so that the module, so when the module picks up something in the uh, microwave, um, field and it causes some sort of phase shift that this will pick up it actually triggers the output for two seconds i believe that's adjustable by adding resistors or changing the values won't worry about that but the output will go high for two seconds and then it will go off again and it just keeps doing that over and over again so this could easily be replaced with a pir sensor by the way because they are similarly behaved so this whole project actually could be a pir sensor or some other sensor light beam detect whatever you want now look here this is pin d0 and I'm going to connect that there, use that as my input and just zoom in so you can see. There's your D0 as your trigger input. You've got your power there in the top left corner. And there's one thing of note. Um, I'm using a Wi-Fi stack on this because once this is uh, powered up, um, it's going to behave like an access point. And when you're going to connect to the access point, it will show you all of your Wi-Fi uh, routers in your vicinity, your other access points, and it will allow you to choose one and set the password. So you'll put the SSID and password in, and then this will remember that after that point. And then when it boots up, it will connect to your network. And then you're going to access this via its IP address. Now, the reason that I'm talking about pin, uh, pin on here, which is pin D5, which I've just connected to, is that if ever you want to change that, you need to bring pin D5 to ground 
at power up okay so then you would hold down uh, you know you could push reset or just disconnect the power and power up while that's connected and that is going to erase the electrical programmable memory on here so remove those Wi-Fi settings and then the system will say I've got no Wi-Fi settings go into access point mode so really just power it on with the wire and then pluck it off and then you can repeat the process and if you really want to you can put a switch between that so pin d5 and ground you can add a switch and actually what you'll notice if you again we'll zoom in here and i'll actually even turn it around pin d5 there is actually next to ground so how convenient is that you really wouldn't forget that at all would you in a hurry pin d5 and ground are next to each other okay so that's all hooked up now we have to jump over to the software. We're at the back office PC now. I've hooked up the device and its breadboard to the PC via this USB wire. And it's all nice and simple. The Arduino interface loads up and then you just go to tools and find your COM port here and click, click COM4 in this case and it's hooked up ready to be programmed. Now there are a number of hoops that you have to go through. There are lots of tutorials on this. Look for tutorials on how to set up a node MCU with um, Arduino and how to add additional libraries to Arduino. So uh, you can see I have selected, I'll just tell you, I've selected node MCU 1.0 ESP 12 e module so that's what this is and then you will probably need to go to manage libraries and add certain libraries here so you can see I've got the ESP 8266 Wi-Fi library I believe that comes with the node uh, MCU one anyway but further down you'll see DNS server and Wi-Fi manager and they come from somewhere else you can see I've got a github address here um, but you add these uh, it escapes me for the moment how you do that but you think it's via include library and manage library and you just add them all but if you go to perhaps this github.com tzapu wi-fi manager they'll give you instructions on how to add this to arduino as well but really if you're at this point now you really need to start learning how to google so uh let's just go through the code we'll step through here's a variable that stores the ip address 25 characters it's set to blank and then there's a define here of the reset pin which is pin 14 which is D5 on our hardware. So it's in Arduino speak, it's GPIO 14, but on Node uh, MCU or ESP12, it's, it's marked as D5. So you have these little maps that you can find online, but don't worry about that. Just trust me, it's pin D5. Um, here we have the radar pin is assigned on pin 16, and that maps to D0 on our hardware. Now you'll see slightly different here because this is a const int rather than a define. They're both pretty similar. Don't worry about that. It's because I've been cutting and pasting and adding to this, this bit of code for a while. We have a variable here called radar value that stores the current radar value. If it's a one, it means it's detected something. If it's a zero, it means it's not detecting anything. We have a pre previous radar value flag that's just used a bit later as is radar counts and last uh, counts last checked these are to do with how we monitor those activations and triggers from the web page just to make them useful uh, working our way down here you've got Wi-Fi server port 80 so that's the port the usual HTTP or port you can change that if you want then we have a setup function where we set up the serial port so that we can output debug messages and you'll see uh, serial.println or serial.print and they're sending debug messages to that monitor port and we're setting the uh, pins on the device. So you can see here, the first one we've set the reset pin, which is that pin D5, to have an internal pull-up. That means it's, it's held up to five volts. And when we short it to ground, it'll detect that. And that's when it sees it as a triggered state. And that comes a little bit later because you can see here, if we see that pin is low right here, we're going to say on the serial port, we're resetting the settings. And then we say Wi-Fi manager reset settings. And it basically clears the EEPROM so that all of the, uh, any uh, Wi-Fi router, your Wi-Fi router setup gets erased. And when it sees the Wi-Fi uh, routers erased, it goes into access point mode because I don't have a valid configuration we have to go into access point mode which is this little piece of code here and you can see it actually sets up an access point called tboss node because I use it a lot tboss node and a password which we've set to one two three four five six seven eight so that's a bit like when you set up your internet of things device and then you have to go into the device to set it up um, sometimes your phone has software that does that automatically you've seen it do it but that's really all your phone is doing uh, when it does that 
and uh, once that's connected it's great it'll get an IP address from the DHCP server and say all good let's go server started and that's it Wi-Fi is done and there's a beautiful little menu um, I'll show you that working in a moment when we program the device scrolling down you can see we have a loop that goes around endlessly with a hundred milliseconds delay just to allow system interrupt Wi-Fi things to occur it's nice to give them a little friendly delay to allow those interrupts to occur time to time and what we say here is the radar value variable we're saying a radar variable is equal to digital read so we're reading from that radar pin we're seeing if it's a digital 5 volts or 0 volts that's being sent by that module there and we're storing that in a variable called radar value uh, that will be a one if it's on and then we're saying if the radar value is not equal to the previous value so that's saying if something's changed either it's come on or it's gone off uh, then go into this if statement and then further into the if statement we say if it's actually activated that means it was off but now it's on I want to add to our radar counter uh, one plus plus in C, C terminology plus plus means add one and then I'm going to print to the serial uh, line that a trigger has been detected and I'm going to print how many radar detections we've had since we've turned this on just as a useful debugging variable and um, then what we do is we say previous radar value equals the radar value that way when we read it the next time if it's not changed we won't add this one we'll ignore it we won't go into the loop um, but into that in inner logic if there's nothing's changed so we'll save a few cycles because cycles means power on a device that could be battery powered you just want to save it where you can it might not equate to much but you know who knows it could be a few milliamps a month and then uh, we go further down and uh, there's some Wi-Fi uh, housekeeping here about this server available business but then really it says if client so it says a new client has connected that means something has come over the internet and it's trying to access our port 80 it's saying give me data and uh, again ignore the housekeeping it's reading the data it's reading that line and deciding what to do with it but more more or less you've just got standard html coming at this point so you've got the http headers to say expect some text is coming doc type html the usual stuff you have and then everything that follows there is actual standard html just being printed out printed out that uh, TCP IP port bang 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 and what we're saying here you can see there's a little bit of inline CSS that says if the radar is picked up a one make the background of the web page red to say it's currently detecting somebody so that's what that is um, and that's all in the header you know that's just basically modifying the background color style to red if um, if something's being detected so that's cute and you can see that's all again in the HTTP header the HTML header it's not even into the body yet so once we get into the body proper you see it says radar status and it's saying if the radar is off like zero there's nothing going on it says no and you think why is it printing no that's because the next line that follows says person detected right now so it's like saying <laughs> if it's true we're one it will say person detected right now if it's a zero it'll go no person detected right now all right cute you, you get it you get it you'll see it when it's running and then it says there were radar counts minus last uh, counts last checks so that's working out how many um, events have happened since the last time you checked this web page so if you set it recording uh, you set it running sorry and then you went away and then you came back and then you went on its web page it might say there have been 20 activations since you last checked because it might not be read because there might not be a current activation someone might have come into the room and gone out come into the room gone out walked away you know cars parked on your drive and disappeared however you're picking up and that's how you work out what you've seen since the last time and that's what you get there radar counts uh, and then the radar counts is giving you the total so it's saying how many since last time and how many since time immemorium since we've turned on the device and actually there's a little hyperlink here right here that says click here to reset the trigger counters so if you click here it will reset these radar counters and things because maybe you want to do that for whatever reason and then we go down a little bit more and we say counts since the last checked so it knows you've just checked it now and it says set it to the current radar counter so that might be a thousand for example and then later it has these values so it can do a minus 
So we're moving down and then there's just some basic again HTTP housekeeping that you don't really need to worry about. But this if statement here at the end is interesting because that's the logic for the R. So if you look up here, it's actually a hyperlink and I know it looks a bit crazy because you have these um, inline quotes so you're you're terminating them with these uh, backslashes before the quote but basically when you go to a website you know how it says google.com front slash search dot html this is basically saying 192.168 which is the web page of this device front slash r r is the name of the page we could have called it r.html or you know look look here i can just say r.php for example we could pretend it's a php page or an html page but if the user goes to the page r it basically still displays everything else as it did, but it has this last little bit of logic that basically says radar counts equals zero and counts last checked equals zero. So it's re reset those counters that it uh, referred to earlier. Now, what you can see be because of this, you could move this if statement much further up and you could have different web pages. You could have an, in, uh, an index.html or a status.html or just a default or a configuration. And based on that, you could actually give different body HTML code out. So you could have different uh, web pages really for these different functions but I've just dumped it all into the first web page and I've put it all on the github for you to play with because you know to be honest that's what it's about we want to keep it as simple as possible so you guys can understand it and look at my code on github so once we have all the code done all we need to do is to click upload and that will compile and upload the code I like to click save but I think it saves it anyway but always click save because you want to make sure you're your work safe and you can see it says compiling sketch there in the bottom so that means it's actually compiling the uh, C code um, the Arduino fied C code and it's going to make it into a uh, byte code that will be ran on the device so the ESP 12 on here is a single core uh, processor and it's got its own real-time operating system that's handling the Wi-Fi and a bunch of other stuff and on there there'll be a program which will be an Arduino uh, interpreter or byte code interpreter that's actually running your program so it's kind of cute it's like your own app on this uh, little chip here um, ESP32 so you could run this on an ESP32 and that has a dual core and you might get more performance and you can see at the bottom of the screen it's currently writing it to the device and it's saying we've used up 28% of program storage and 37% of memory we've not written this in any particularly careful way it doesn't matter you can make this more efficient but there it goes and it's it's writing it directly to the device at the bottom you can see 27% 50% and once it's done it'll be done and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here and click serial monitor uh oh, <laughs> you can't do that because the port's busy. I hope I haven't messed it up. I'm going to try again. I'm going to run a serial monitor and you can see the serial monitor right here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Woohoo! And you can see there that we have um, we have some information coming up um, about the device. And as you reset it, you'll be able to see all sorts of things here. So you can see actually it's uh, got a client value on here from last time which is kind of nice and it's being assigned via DHCP the address 192.168.0.68 and if I just take a wire I'm just going to reset it because your one will look different because this one will already add uh, potentially a piece of code because I've been playing with it for a while but I'm just going to hold that pin D5 to ground like I told you about so now I've hit it to the ground and you can see trigger detected by the way trigger detected is coming up because that whole microwave sensor is flashing I'm going to hit reset now and you can see, and I'm going to pull out my jumper wire again from D5, and you can see settings invalidated. This may cause the access point not to start up properly. I don't know why. <laughs> I can't remember. I don't know where that message is coming from. It's something from the Wi-Fi manager stack. Ignore that. It doesn't matter. And then you can see auto connect, connecting as Wi-Fi client, blah, blah, blah. Connecting result zero. So that means it fails to try to connect to anything because that configuration is corrupt. So it says instead I'm going to become an access point called TBOSS node with the password 12345678, and this will be my IP address server start. Started. and we're going to connect to that from the phone just like you're connecting to any access point where it says tap here to configure the access point like when you're trying to connect in a coffee shop or an airport let's go do that now we're back it's all programmed up and we are away from the computer so this is just a simple USB power lead um, and I can hear the power supply screaming a little bit because it's from a mobile phone and I think I'm working it close to the edge remember this is a full-on Wi-Fi chipset with a 
single core in this case processor but if you have the 32 bit the ESP32 that's a dual core processor so these aren't really messing around these these do need a bit of current to get going especially once they're running in full Wi-Fi mode you can see I have the reset jumper now which I'm gonna pop um, so I'm just gonna fire up my mobile phone and we should see that on the network and you can see it right there TBOSS node so I'm gonna hit TBOSS node and it says tap to sign in and we're gonna hit that again and then you can see you have a configuration screen. So if you hit this one, it will actually do a Wi-Fi scan and show you all of your Wi-Fi. I'm not going to do that because I don't know. I'm a bit ginger of showing you all my Wi-Fi things, but I'm going to hit configure Wi-Fi. And here you can just type in the SSID and password directly. But as I said, in the previous mode, it will show you the Wi-Fi and the relative signal strengths. But here you just put in your Wi-Fi called Bob or something and then your password and go or you know if you need to hit scan and then once you hit save it will restart uh, hopefully if you've put the password in correctly connected to your network here we are it's not particularly exciting user interface you can use the Arduino software and add your own but basically you can see it says no person detected right now there were three activations since last checking this page and I'm going to refresh the page and uh... There were three activations and I'm going to wave my hand around because it's just above me. It's just sitting there. And we should see with a little tinker in. Oh, there we go. It detected me. So the HTML is currently set to just flash red when it detects something. And at the moment, because it's set close to the desk, it's not really picking it up. But I do find that if you mount this vertically, and probably away from all of this massive amount of breadboard, you'll get better results. And that's really the first step. I mean, there's a lot of things to do at this point. You can uh, modify the UI, you can install an MQTT service so that you can actually start posting this to uh, if this then that. But where it really is useful, if you do genuinely leave it in a room and people enter the room, it likes bigger things. It's more like a a person detector. Uh, me fiddling around like this might not set it up, but you know, making bigger movements, walking in and out of areas, it will definitely pick them up. It can even pick them up through walls. You'll be able to see the difference in the activations. And uh, once you've done that, you can then think about miniaturizing it. So what I've done here is to show you this is a same thing now, miniaturized down. So I've used a smaller version of the board uh, and I've actually directly wired in free space the actual Wi-Fi um, radar module and you can see it hooked up right there and I've worked out that some of the pins are quite close to connect and then I've put the D0 over here exactly as we had um, and the next stage for this uh, which I probably will do today if I can find it is to actually put this into a small enclosure and I worked out that you can actually fit this in fact let me show you I'll just take the parts out I'm gonna crack this open oh my word get out that jiffy bag here we go i'm gonna crack the board open and get out fresh mmm i love the smell of a fresh mcu and we don't necessarily need all those headers they're handy to keep though they're always handy to keep for your projects put them in your box of tricks um i am of the firm belief because i've already carved out this that we could actually fit that in exactly like that so this is a SD card box and if I see if the lid can shut it can mm. there you go USB in the side and you can fit this whole sensor in something that small and with a short little USB wire um, just plug it into a mobile phone charger and there you have your very own Internet of Things uh, occupancy sensor. I mean, uh, they, they sh it should work pretty well even outside if you want a car dispenser. Uh, dis <laughs> a car dispenser. I want to dispense cars. A car detector on your driveway. Perhaps you want a safety thing, you know, or an alert if somebody, uh, the postman's at your post um, box. Um, all sorts of manner of things. Um, you can just use exactly the same stack. So please uh, have a go at that. 
come and join me on my Discord. Please consider supporting me on Patreon because um, it really helps me get motivated all your ideas to start doing more and more of these things. I'm really getting into the IoT again. Um, and you'll find my software on GitHub. So if you go to GitHub and type back office show, you'll find the associated source code for all of these projects because I make so many of them and many of them you don't even see. Um, and you, you can know, we can add screens to this. I had a, the version of the stat with the screen and all that we can just keep going and rolling with this again shout out in the discord any inspiration what you want to see um, I do have a little sexy thing coming up though in the next video once you get more confident in your designs and how this works you can see here I've added the same basic board plus the radar Doppler detector however I've actually glued them on top of these relays using the double-sided 3M tape and these are optically isolated relays you get this PCB on the internet and I've attached four outputs to the inputs of the relay board plus the radar board is connected in the same way as before and I've also piggybacked the power and that's because this would probably go inside something else that will be powered from here so this will actually provide power to the main board but you can see here it gives you four output options um, from the relays and you've got normally open and normally closed contact one per relay plus remote sensing so that's a lot of fun and you can certainly do a lot with a little setup like this so you can see what's coming up hopefully that's whet your appetite and as ever everybody thank you for watching